1,226 days. That's how long it's been in between Ariana Grande's most recent two albums. And a lot of shit has happened since then. We got a new fucking president. This guy's almost done with his fucking term. We're about to have Civil War 2, Electric Boogaloo over this shit. We beat COVID. Let's go USA. USA. How long is 1,226 days? Uh, that's 15 Kim K. Chris Humphreys marriages or one third of an Iraq war. If you had to guess who would be the artist of the 2020s, Ariana Grande would have been a good bet. She just released these two mega albums. This one came out in 2020. That's going to count for the end of decade lists. But when the world needed her most, she vanished. Despite her lack of music, I know she did some features or whatever, she's still very popular. She was the 16th most streamed artist in 2023. Despite her popularity, I feel like I don't actually know a lot about Ariana Grande, the artist. You know what I mean? Like, what do I really know about her? Uh, she has a good voice. She has a ponytail. She sings about sex, sometimes. So I decided if I wanted to know Ariana Grande better, what better way than to listen to her art. If you want to understand Picasso better, you don't listen to 500 podcasts about Picasso, you just go look at some of this dude's fucking drawings. Which is ironic because you're watching a video of me talking about Ariana Grande and not listening to her music, but like, I'll put a Spotify link below or something. So to really understand Ariana Grande, we gotta go back in time. Or, as a wise man once said, what we gotta do right here is go back, back into time. On March 25th, 2013, if you knew about Ariana Grande, you were probably like me at that time. A literal child. If you knew about Ariana Grande, it was probably from the semi-hit Nickelodeon show, Victorious. Look, that's her right there. Where she played the role of Cat Valentine, a ditzy high schooler with a heart of gold. And guess what? They sang some fucking songs on Victorious. What did they sing? They sang LA Boys. They sang Give It Up. They sang It's Not Christmas Without You. I've never fucking heard of any of these songs in my life. Ariana Grande also had a record deal, right? She had a history in music. She was in this Broadway musical 13. She posted some videos on YouTube and then she got a record deal. And then she put out this single, Put Your Hearts Up. So, you know... She had done some music up to this point in time, and while I wouldn't say the music is bad, it's very much targeted towards children. There's like a lot of auto-tune, there's like really over-the-top production. It's not really like saying anything because it has to be bland and generic to appeal to all these innocent children who haven't heard about the horrors and sufferings of the world yet. Again, while I wouldn't say it's... I'm gonna say it. It's not good music. <laughs> what it is is really just a copy, a pale imitation of real pop music to sell to as many children as possible. Which is fine, children don't need to be listening to crazy shit, so it's probably good that they're listening to, to Ariana sing about being nice to your parents, but you know what I mean. It's not music that I would listen to. So this is all on March 25th, 2013. But it all changes the very next day. Day because that's when Ariana puts out The Way, where she basically says, fuck them kids. The Way is a much more mature song, right? It's probably a song you could get away with playing at a middle school dance, but it's like just saucy enough where a teacher might give a second thought. You know, you don't want a bunch of 12 year olds singing about being a freak. <laughs> God, please no. But what this did was really distance Ariana from her previous image of being super kid friendly. On top of that, ooh la la, they put out a music video, Mac Miller and Ariana Grande fucking swapped spit in that video. They had so much chemistry and all that buzz added to the hype around this song. But despite all the maturity and the chemistry, the song wouldn't be good if it didn't sound good, and oh my god, does it sound good. Her voice goes crazy in this. She has some crazy whistle notes at the end. It's a really catchy, simple beat. 
is just such a good song. I think it's a hot take. I think it's Ariana's best song, which I know is pitching with heat the first song we talk about, but for real. Anyway, this song did really, really well, relatively speaking, compared to her previous songs. And with that, she was fucking off to the races to make her first album. Before we talk about her first album, I feel like it would be helpful to go back in time to 2013 and kind of think about the popular music landscape, which was what I would describe as extremely hedonistic, right? Miley Cyrus just came out with We Can't Stop. We had yet to defeat Party Rock Anthem. Kesha, she was like super popular. Everyone was like super hype about the Great Recession ending and like doing tons of ecstasy. And in the midst of all that chaos, Ariana comes out with Yours Truly. Now, th the first song on Yours Truly is Honeymoon Avenue. And it starts out with all these classic violins, and then some guys come in, and they do a bunch of shoo-wop doo-dops or something. And then, and then, a fucking, the beat comes in, and it goes crazy. The last song on the album starts out with this piano. Then some guy starts hitting some triangle. Then this crazy EDM electro drop comes in and it goes crazy. I would describe yours truly as an album that combines the classic music of the oldies with more modern beats and sounds. <laughs> the songs on this album uh, follow a, a pattern for the most part, right? There's some old school doo-wop, shoo-wop song. <laughs> Then there's like a more up-tempo 90s R&B Mariah Carey type song. And then there's a totally just normal, modern, early 2010s pop hit. It really follows it well for the first six songs. And then it kind of gets a little funky towards the end. But you know what I mean. Fun fact, popular song, that's based on popular from Wicked. And Ariana's going to be in Wicked. Her voice really stands out on this album, right? This is the early 2010s when everyone's fucking using auto-tune. Everyone's fucking listening to dubstep for the first time. And what do we get? We get Ariana just singing, plain and normal. And her voice just like hits all these crazy high notes. It's really strong. It's really clear. It's a really good showcase for her voice. Lyrically, you know, I want to say it's anything uh, super new is about love. Sometimes love is good, sometimes love is bad. But you know what? Sometimes when you're making a pop hit, the simpler, the better. I feel like Ariana was evoking a lot of old Hollywood type vibes with this. You know, you can even see it in the cover of the album. I feel like she was evoking a lot of like Americana type vibes. I would almost describe it as Lana without the angst, which I feel like without the angst is the reason why I feel like the lyrics are kind of like bleh because what's Lana without the angst it's just like I feel like the songs I like most from this album are the more up-tempo R&B or pop songs like I feel like the 50s doo-wop stuff is like a nice homage but then it's like kind of slow you know what I mean a fun fact the Rascals produced a bunch of songs on this album you can hear them screaming it's the Rascals on a bunch of songs and the Rascals one half of them is Leon Thomas III. Leon Thomas III, that's that's this fucking guy from Victorious. In fact, this guy has produced like so many fucking songs and hits. This guy is doing amazing. Good job, Leon Thomas III. Yours truly debuted at number one. It was like, you know, a very rare achievement for her to have her debut album debut at number one. But as a wise man once said, how you get hype off one hit. Do that shit again. And guess what? She did it again. <laughs> My Everything saw Ariana Grande discard all the 50s doo-wop shit she was doing in Yours Truly. Good fucking riddance. And she really just leans fully into modern pop in this album. She experiments a lot with EDM, which was, as I was saying, really popping at this time. And she actually has good EDM songs. I feel like normally when pop artists do EDM, it turns out like uh, I Knew You Were Trouble, which don't get me wrong, I like I Knew You Were Trouble, but it's very like obviously playing into a fad. But I feel like Ariana's voice just really fits well with EDM because her voice is so strong and so powerful, it really matches the over the top electronic production of all the EDM. She's also got a bunch of sad bangers in this album. So while yours truly 
looked at love through more rose-tinted glasses. I feel like this album is a bit more down on love, but that's good for us because all these songs are like up-tempo bangers, but they're also sad, which just like makes it like even better. <laughs> so the first song on this album besides the intro is Problem, and I feel like Problem I don't like problem, to be honest. My least favorite trend of the 2010s was when we decided to not let the super talented singer sing the chorus and replace it with some guy or sub electronic bb boo bops. Like, just let her sing the chorus, bro. But yeah, I feel like problem just doesn't work for me. It's like trying to be a hit, but when a hit misses, you just like see through it and see what a like pop money-making machine it is so it i don't like problem sorry Iggy azalea i do like break your heart right back which i also feel like is very similar to problem and is also like you know this 2010s pop but for some reason like i just i just feel like break your heart right back is fun and like bouncy and i can't really describe why i feel like one song is better than the other because they're both like pop music hits it just is, and I feel like that is 2010's pop. If it doesn't hit, it really doesn't hit. Like I was saying before, this album is more ambivalent about love. Uh, the album's called My Everything. There's a song called My Everything. It's kind of depressing because it's saying she lost someone, but she's that person's still her everything. I feel like it's exploring love in a deeper ways than in yours truly. It's kind of exploring like the sadder side of love compared to yours truly. There are so many features on this album. Like, um, what was this thing in the 2010s when every pop song had to have a rapper on it? Come on. I know we gotta like, you know, hit all the demos and sell iTunes, you know, copies, but come on. Once again, this album is supposed to showcase her voice because despite all the EDM and shit in this album, she doesn't actually use auto-tune I think on her voice maybe she uses a little auto-tune but I'm sure everyone in the music industry uses a little auto-tune also I hope that's not sacrilegious to suggest she maybe uses a little bit of auto-tune I'm sorry if you don't use auto-tune Ariana it doesn't sound like she uses auto-tune because her voice comes through like super clear and super natural in all of these EDM songs despite all the electronicness of the background and I feel like that provides like a really cool listening contrast. I feel like there's some foreshadowing in this album. These three songs are kind of like R&B type songs, which she'll explore more of later. And also, You Don't Know Me is a funny song to end the album with, because it is her basically saying, you know my name, not my story, which is also something she'll return back to saying. It once again went number one. And since this is her most like poppy album, I feel like we might as well have the whole pop industrial complex discussion right now. Listen, okay? I know a bunch of producers and songwriters probably wrote every single line of this album and a bunch of marketers and executives tailored this fucking album to sell as many fucking copies as possible to get the dollars out of my pocket. But listen, okay? Good and bad are vestiges of a world failed by the Enlightenment. You're watching a video of me wearing a dress I bought on Amazon so some guy could deliver it to my house so you could watch this video so you could watch five Taco Bell ads so you could go to Taco Bell and buy a taco so some guy could make a taco for you using lettuce that Taco Bell bought from some farmer who's growing lettuce to sell a Taco Bell, okay? This is our fucking economy. Nothing makes sense anymore. Just enjoy the music. Ariana's next song was Focus, which is basically problem but she copied it uh okay sure she did spend a lot of time teasing in an album called moonlight but the album we got instead was dangerous woman dangerous woman that's basically a synonym for bad bitch and this is a bad bitch album this album's for the girlies and ariana basically puts forth a thesis statement in this album about who a bad bitch is first and foremost a bad bitch is honest right She's very honest about all the shit we're about to discuss that she talked about in this album. She doesn't hold back. She just says what's on her mind, and some people might interpret it as explicit or TMI, but she's gonna say it because it's her truth. She's very active in her seeking of love in this album, right? Whereas in previous albums, she might have been more passive, and it was a thing that was happening to her. 
in this album, she's talking about, I want your love. She talks a lot about sex. I feel like there was this thing that happened where women felt more comfortable being horny on the internet. And I feel like Ariana helped contribute to that. And that's good because we should all be sexually, sexually liberated so we can defeat, uh, you know, the world order. She talks a lot about finding happiness in herself and not caring about what other people think because she's okay with herself and that's all she needs. Once again, I don't care. That's like a, you know my name, not my story song. She also talks a lot about um, being in a relationship that she knows is bad but can't stop coming back to. And I feel like this also matched a vibe that was going on where everyone wanted like a bad boy or whatever, like in the way, you know what I mean? Like, I got a bad boy, gotta admit it. All these songs on Dangerous Woman are about like, she knows this guy is bad for her, but oh yeah, like that dick is so good. <laughs> She's basically dickmatized. Even though this album's still a pop album, is different than the EDM of my everything. It takes on a more like Broadway, jazzy, show tune vibe. There's a lot of trumpets and her voice is really like belting out all these songs. I'll be honest, like these like more jazzy songs aren't my favorite by Ariana, no offense, but on this album, we also got a bunch of bangers. Be All Right, I think that's like a top three Ariana Grande song. Once again, is showcasing her voice. And like I was saying before, she belts out a bunch of songs, hits a bunch of high notes. Once again, it's showcasing that she doesn't use autotune. She don't need that shit. It's interesting because the last song of the album is called Jason's Song. And this is the first time she kind of breaks the fourth wall because she doesn't talk about a guy named Jason in Jason's Song. So I'm assuming it's like about a real life Jason. So then you wonder, who the fuck is Jason? Turns out Jason is the guy who wrote the Broadway musical 13 that Ariana was in when she was a kid and I guess he wrote this song for her but it's interesting because it's the first time she breaks the fourth wall foreshadowing Pete Davidson welcome to the party and from the sparks between these two sweetener is born and you could tell she's in a really silly goofy mood because she's upside down on top of that all the songs are in lowercase double silly goofy mood so you know this album's gonna be different. And how's it different? It's not just about her voice belting all these notes anymore. She's much more reserved with her voice. She's almost like rapping in some of these songs. And the focus is really on the production. There's a lot of weird production in this album. A lot of like weird synths or like robotic boobop beeps. <laughs> going on. Pharrell Williams apparently produced some of the songs on this track. It's kind of transitioning from the more maximalist pop of her previous albums into a more like vibey state of music, which she'll kind of keep on doing in later albums. But she also has a bunch of normal, pure pop songs without any weird bb wops. These are good songs. I feel like a big theme of this album is religion and kind of love as this define object sent from the heavens. You got some very obvious references to religion in Raindrops and God is a Woman and The Light is Coming. But even beyond the like surface level references to God and shit, I feel like she talks about love as this mystical thing that like she can't control and makes her feel like super happy in a way she can't even like understand like rationally and i feel like this is kind of representative of like a new way of thinking that we think about love because as a society at least in america we're not religious as much as we were like 50 years ago and i feel like she's kind of putting forth this idea of love as a religion as love as something that can like really almost save your soul or like give you a happiness that you can't necessarily understand. A lot of these songs kind of talk about love as something you have to believe in and put a lot of faith in. She kind of talks about love as this thing that can overcome a lot of 
darkness, which is kind of like hinted at in different parts of this album, right? There's like a darkness that she's talking about and the light is coming. There's a salt that she's talking about in Sweetener. Breathe in better off. It's like talking about these dark feelings that she has, but the love that she has is able to help her overcome that. A lot of these songs are also the first time Ariana talks about manifesting and energy and believing in shit to make it come true. You know, she'll kind of reference this in later albums. Um, I believe in this shit, bro. Like, I don't know if it's true that, like, you know, I'm a Jedi and I could literally, if I believe hard enough, I could lift that book over there with my mind. You know, I don't know if I have, like, that strong of a mind, physical world connection, but I, I believe that, like, um, what manifesting is really is just believing in yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like people who hate on manifesting and, like, be like, oh, that's not, like, scientifically possible. You're, like, missing the point, dude. The point is you have to believe in it so hard that you almost delude yourself and, like, banish the thought of failure because, like, which is going to help you more, believing in yourself or not believing in yourself? Believing in yourself, bro. So, Ariana doing God's work, spreading the word of manifesting. I feel like the song that really ties the whole album together, weirdly enough, is Pete Davidson, because it's a song that breaks the fourth wall and references her real life relationship with Pete Davidson. Spoiler alert, she doesn't end up with Pete Davidson. But the song Pete Davidson is talking about how she's going to be in love forever. So it's like, whoops. This song kind of made me think about this book called The Dolphin by Robert Lowell. Um, in it, he basically includes private letters from his ex-wife into the book, which is really fucked up. And people are like, dude, that's fucked up. But it just kind of reminds me of Pete Davidson. Because just like Pete Davidson, it's a time when real life and art blend and oftentimes real life is a lot messier than art some standout songs for me sweetener good night and go that's a really good song um i feel like i wish i liked this album more than i did because i really like the concept and the idea of like exploring god and love and religion and love and like i want to enjoy the alternative pop stuff but i just it's just like too bb boop bop for me. Pete Davidson, Ariana Grande, they have a very public breakup. A lot of people are talking about it, and I feel like it's because she had the Pete Davidson song in Sweetener, and everyone was talking about it. She put out Thank You Next, kind of in response to that, and oh my god. This song is so fucking good. <laughs> it's just like a really simple like beat and like synth piano. Her voice is just so like angelic. She's just name dropping. She's she's bearing her heart to us. It's so catchy. It's such a good song. And besides the fact it just sounded really good, I feel like it was just, it caught on as such a vibe because Thank You Next is basically the motto you need to have to survive in our dating app society. Like, thank you next, just fucking swipe, 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 just, just like, breath, first search. You know, we've all been somewhere where it's like, we feel a lot of pain, but we gotta like, find the strength to move on. And I feel like it's really interesting because she could have come out with a diss album. She could have said, F you, Pete Davidson. But a lot of the song is very gracious. It's a big theme of it, I feel like, is forgiveness and letting go of the past and moving on. And also talks about self-love, which everyone fucking loves to talk about. If Ariana was a star before, she became a fucking supernova, melt her fucking face off, superstar after this. The song went number one, all over the place. Everyone got super hyped for Thank You Next, the album. I feel like Thank You Next is her most sonically cohesive album, whereas in previous albums, she had like R&B songs and EDM songs and pop songs and Broadway songs. All the songs in this album are basically like chill bangers. The production is a bunch of lo-fi, stripped back beats, and it's just her voice on top of that. I feel like this album 
is a narrative album because it tells a story, right? You start off with her in this relationship. Oh my God, it's so good. I, I'm so needy for your, for <laughs> this relationship. Then there's like all this bad shit that goes on. She's, she's like pretending to be okay when she's not. Then she's making up with him. I feel like the real turning point of the album is in my head where she basically says that, oh shit, this guy that I'm with, I'm dating the person that I think he is, not the person that he actually is. And from there, she feels like, you know what, fuck this guy. Uh, fuck it, we ball. Dump his ass. And she's a baller again. This album is very vulnerable and honest and direct with how she feels, right? We all fucking know the backstory of this album. We know about Pete Davidson. And she's just, she's just like, she's like, you know what? I know y'all know about it. I'm gonna just tell you how I feel. Deal with it. And you know what? It's fucking badass. It's fucking baller. She's using her music as therapy. Good shit. A big theme of this album, I feel like, is Ariana going through her process of realizing that she can find happiness within herself, right? Because in Sweetener, she's talking about love as this like divine gift from the gods, and oh my god, like I can't survive without this love. This love is so good. And then in Thank You Next, she's kind of talking more about, you know what? I got myself. I'm gonna be okay. She got even more popular somehow. Then she did a bunch of collabs and shit, and then boom, the sex album. <laughs> we all know positions are 34, 35. Oh, she talks about sex in this album, blah, 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 blah. To me, this album is a very fun, light, like, hee hee, ha ha album, just like, strolling through <laughs> memories and like, cracking little jokes about like, that dick being good and shit. It's cool to just like, have a chill album after all the drama. This album gives me like, an old school R&B vibe. A lot of the songs, I feel like, Give me either Destiny's Child or Boys to Men vibes. Especially the one she has with The Weeknd, I think. That's definitely Boys to Men vibes. Basically, all the songs on this album are about love and how awesome it is. And please come give it to me. And oh my god, I love this love. And I feel like it kind of goes back to the religious love as this divine entity that she kind of explored in Sweetener. She talks about love as something that makes her better as a person. POV especially. Like, I know in POV she's talking about loving herself the way her lover loves her. But you could easily <laughs> substitute that lover for Jesus and being like, I want to love myself through this other entity. You know what I mean? It's very faith-based, very religious. She talks about some other stuff she talks about in other albums too. In Shut Up, she's like, shut up, stop talking about me, worry about your own shit. And Just Like Magic is probably her most overtly manifesting think it and believe it song. She's basically talking about how if she thinks something, it will happen in real life just like magic. Manifesting. It's not science, guys. So Positions went number one. Everyone was super hype about it. But honestly, I feel like Thank You Next was a very hard album to follow up. And so Positions had all this hype around it that it honestly, I feel like, didn't didn't live up to. Like, I, I wish there were more bangers on his album. And thus begins Ariana's side quest era. She's on The Voice. She starts a makeup company. Everyone starting makeup companies nowadays. She's gonna be in Wicked. She's doing all this shit. She does like a few features here and there, but nothing crazy. And I feel like we live in such a low attention span society. It's honestly crazy that she hasn't released an album since 2020 before her most recent album. But you know what? Props to her. Fuck the machine. The art is the art. She does what she wants. Love it. But guess what? It's not 2023 anymore. It's fucking Ariana season. A few weeks ago, Ariana dropped Yes And. It's this dance pop techno banger. It's like something you will hear at a club or a disco or something. I don't know. I don't go to the clubs or discos. I feel like it's a very different sound to her compared to Thank You Next or Positions, which were, I feel like, trap influenced. This one's very much a funky disco pop song. She doesn't even sing for almost the entire first minute besides like some oohs and ahs. The focus is really on the beat and the dancing, and get the fuck up and shake your ass. Lyrically, I feel like Yes And 
is also kind of a synonym for thank you next is like, yes, I've accepted what's happened to me. I'm ready to move on. What's next is basically talking about self love, be your own best friend, manifesting, you know, don't care what other people think. Very similar content wise to thank you next. Very relatable motto for the modern age as we've discussed. I feel like the music video is very cool. It's got a bunch of dorky, lame-ass critics like me fucking sitting down and having all these criticisms of her side quests. You know, they're like, oh, whatever. Like, I don't give a fuck about REM beauty. I want her to make some fucking music. And basically, she says to these fucking lame-ass critics, fucking get up and shake that ass, motherfucker. We're all gonna die one day. Life is beatingless. We might as well fucking dance. Another interesting thing about this song, I feel like, is that she uses autotune or a vocoder? V vocoot? Vo How do you say this word? I don't know. I'm gonna embarrass myself. She uses like autotune or something in the bridge of this song, which I think is the first time she's ever used autotune or at least explicitly used autotune. So I feel like this song really signifies a new type of music for her. And that all brings us to Eternal Sunshine, her most recent album. Oh my god, we've been waiting for this shit for so long. A drought in the desert, society is collapsing, the world is falling apart. A gift from the gods. All right, we're gonna go through this shit song by song because it deserves it because it's really good and her most recent album. Uh, the first song is Intro. It's a very dramatic title, right? Like, end of the world. Like, life and death stakes as things. But is contrasted by the actual production, which itself is very, like, chill and quiet. It's just, like, some violins and guitars. And basically what the song is about, and what the album is about, is her questioning her relationship, or the love that she's in, or the love that the narrator of the album is in. The very first line of the album is her questioning the relationship. The end of the song is wondering if this guy, or girl I guess, it doesn't really specify, but I'm gonna say guy, if this guy loves her. Oh wait, no, it is guy, because it says he, so. Ha. Huh. She doesn't know what her truth is, and she kind of establishes this theme of truth, doubt, finding out the truth, fighting the doubt in this song, and also establishes the characters that we're going to have in this album, right? We have the narrator, Ariana. We have this guy that's inspiring her. This, we assume, is some new guy that's inspiring her. And then the old guy is the guy where she's wondering if she's in the right relationship. And this guy she's in the relationship with is the guy she's wondering if she should tell her truth to, even though it'll hurt him. Also, I'm about to talk a lot about like the themes of the album and shit, but honestly, I feel like the most important thing when it comes to a song is how good it sounds. And this song sounds good. <laughs> the first song that's not the intro establishes our story and it starts with a breakup. She's saying bye to some guy that she's dumping. Once again, it gives me this 90s Destiny's Child. What is that? Destiny's Child? Is it supposed to be Destiny's Childs? Or Destiny's Child? Or Dest- It's definitely not Destiny Child. That's a typo. This song gives me a 90s Destiny's Child. I think that's right. Destiny's Child. Des- Destiny's Childs? And just like in the intro, she's still doubting a lot whether this is even the right move. It's bittersweet that they've broken up. She wonders that they could have done more to save the relationship, but she knows it's the right thing to do to break up. Next song, Don't Wanna Break Up Again. Same type of like 90s pop vibes, continuing the same story of the breakup, right? And this one is tithing even more in depth into you know, she's really doubting if she should break up because she doesn't want to break up again. And she doesn't really explain why she doesn't want to do it besides the fact that it'll be painful. But I think the fact that she says she doesn't want to break up again implies that, like, she's already broken up with this guy. And if she broke up with him again, you know what they say. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't get fooled again. Based on the lyrics, we can assume that they've broken up before and then she came back to him, and now she doesn't want to break up again because she doesn't want to look like a moron for going back to the guy she broke up with for the first time. But guess what? We're all fucking human, and this album is about being human. Saturn Returns Interlude is Ariana's first weird-ass interlude that's, like, not musical. It's just some lady speaking. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory if you listen to it. Basically, it's talking about how Saturn... It's, it goes around for like, you know, every 29 years, Saturn's like back in the same place as when you were born. And so that marks a change in your life. 
personally i don't know if it's because of some planet somewhere but i do agree that turning 30 that's scary as shit bro i I fear the day I turn 30. I know I will not be ready for it. This interlude slaps though. I saved it to my Spotify. I'ma listen to this on repeat. It sets up the next song so good. Eternal Sunshine, title track of the album, very important song of the album, crux of the album, you could argue. So while the previous two songs, Bye and Don't Wanna Break Up Again, were these like 90s dreamy pop, it changes totally to this electro synth pop sound i hate to say it but it sounds like main character music you know what i mean it's like something you would hear in a bar or it's like 2 a.m and you're thinking about your life and you're like leaning against the car window and pondering what's going on this is that type of song and lyrically while the last two songs expressed a lot of doubt about breaking up and whether that was the right thing to do here ariana or the narrator is just talking about their feelings and what they think and not caring about what's right or what's wrong or what she should do or shouldn't do it's the truth and the truth is the truth and her truth is that the guy she's breaking up with has done a lot of bad things to her oh my god these are not good things but but she talks about how she could be the one to say sorry and you know this guy that she's breaking up with, she's in another girl. <laughs> Very explicit, but uh, she's also with a new new boy. She got a new good boy. We're all right and we're all wrong. Life is complicated. There are no winners and losers in love. We only find what we need to find. I feel like the chorus of this song is very interesting because she says, you're my eternal sunshine. And throughout the entire song, the you she's referring to is the person she's breaking up with, which she has talked about previously in this album, what a shitty person they are. But she says to this person that she's breaking up with, you're my eternal sunshine. Eternal sunshine, we assume that's like a good thing. You know what I mean? Like light, God, religion, that's all shit she talked about in previous albums. It's kind of jarring because you wouldn't expect her to say the person she's breaking up with is her sunshine based on what she's saying previously. And the way I interpret that is that she's forgiving this guy and even though their love was complicated ups and downs whatever like he she still loves him in a way and like he is he is her eternal sunshine <laughs> i could also be misinterpreting it maybe the good boy the new good boy is her eternal sunshine but i don't think so i think it's about the guy she's breaking up with this song sounds really good next song is supernatural and it continues with this kind of 80s synthy pop sound that we established in eternal sunshine so the saturn returns interlude is really where the sound of the album switches up from this 90s pop sound to this 80s synth pop and once again it's talking about love as a supernatural force a force she cannot control a divine religious force that takes her over and makes her feel really good it's a theme she's explored previously we know about it and this is part of her telling her truth, right? Her truth is that this love with this new guy, I'm, a, I'm assuming this love is with the new guy, is what is making her feel this way. And this is the first song that's about this new guy. And she's talking about how religious it is, which she has talked about a lot previously. I feel like in the chorus, there might be some autotune that she's using on purpose. It could just be that her voice is that good. I don't doubt that her voice is that good, where I'm just mistaking it for autotune because it's so perfect. But she's definitely like playing with the sound of her voice here, where she's like making it fit in with the synth pop and like making it more like, not robotic, but like more like, you know, synthy. <laughs> true story you know her name not her story it's once again thinking about that theme of truth that we've been thinking about through this album what is the truth is it what people gossip about and say about her or what she knows is the truth she's willing to play along with all these lies because she knows what's real you know her name not her story the boy is mine now we're leaving the synth sound we're going back to this like 90s pop sound is basically talking about this boy I assume it, this is the good boy from Eternal Sunshine. Uh, she's making him feel really good. She, there's a lot of religious references. She talks about how she wasn't expecting it, right? Which ties back to the story that she's been talking about where she was with some other guy 
when she started feeling this guy's vibe and how he was inspiring her. Next song, Yes And. We already talked about how it's a dance pop banger. I feel like this song really stands out on the album because it's the only dance pop song on the album. When I first heard this song as a single, I thought the album we were getting was going to be like future nostalgia, but the actual album is like very different than this single song. In the album though, it really serves as kind of this point of change. It's where she sounds the most confident. She's talking about all the themes of self-love and confidence that she was talking about in Thank You Next. This is basically Thank You Next as we talked about. And within like the theme of truth in the album, I feel like this song kind of says that to tell your truth is the way to live your life. And that is how you are able to move forward in your life. And if you're not telling your truth, you can't get, you know, you can't ask what's next. You can't ask and what. Next song, We Can't Be Friends, Wait For Your Love. This song is so fucking good. I think this is possibly a top five Ariana song. I am selfishly sad that Ariana chose this to be a single because I want to gatekeep the fuck out of this song. It kicks in with this like heartbeat beat and then the synth comes in. It's such like, this is what I feel like when I listen to this song. I feel like I'm in fucking the perks of being a wallflower. And this is a song in the album after she realizes in yes and that she should say her truth. This is where she says her truth, which is that she has to let go of the guy she's in a relationship with and say, we can't be friends, buddy. Despite the fact that she knows she has to move on, her truth is also she still loves this guy. She's gonna wait for this guy's love. In bye, she says, maybe someday we'll look back in love. And she kind of references this eventual future one day where they might be in love again in We Can't Be Friends. The heart is a fickle object. This song is so good. I Wish I Hated You. It's a very slow, almost lullaby-like song. It's talking about the guy she's in a relationship with and how much easier it would be to break up with him if she hated him. But once again, her truth, which is she is going to say her truth no matter what it is, her truth is that she doesn't hate him. And that might make it harder, but you know what would be even harder? For her to not tell her truth. This song is okay but it's important narratively <laughs> imperfect for you i feel like this song at the beginning gives me like country vibes there's like a guitar ariana's almost singing with a drawl at the beginning she's talking about how she is not perfect for this guy she is imperfect for him because guess what life is hard the truth is messy none of us are perfect we're all gonna die but love the religion of love if you love someone, you can be imperfect and find some sort of happiness, some sort of redemption. This is like the thing that we got banished from the garden for is being imperfect. So I feel like this is her really reconciling with that fact and being able to find some kind of love for herself and someone else as well. And it's that bond between them that fixes them because she used to be messy and completely dist distressed but since she met this guy she's all good even though she is still imperfect she has just accepted her imperfection ordinary things last song we're not going to talk about slightly deluxe slightly deluxe my opinion it's fine ordinary things is where she finally accepts her truth and is able to return to a normal quote unquote life after this period of change this turmoil blah 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 drama life is good now and even though she's back to regular life she is changed the album starts with the question how can i tell if i'm in the right relationship and we get the answer at the end shout out nona nana nana probably shout out nana she tells us how you know you're in the right relationship. If you don't go to bed without kissing goodnight, get out. That is the secret to relationships. Thank you for watching. This album, even more than Thank You Next, I think this is even more of a narrative album. This also works better. Thank You Next, I was kind of bullshitting the supernatural part. But Saturn Returns is a supernatural event. She even, she even has a song named Supernatural. But yeah, narratively, she starts out in a relationship that's bad. Saturn returns, that's supernatural, changes her totally. 
this is where the 80s synth pop music starts and she's talking about this new guy she's with this new guy there's all this drama you know she, she's still like going through some shit and then in yes and that's the most confident part of the album that's where she learns that she finally has to let go of this old guy and once she let goes of the old guy she's able to fully love the new good boy <laughs> good boy i'm sorry for making fun of you good boy this album i feel like talks about some really big important things for life for us as we're moving through life we all go through like doubt and wondering if we're going to be loved and wondering what our place in life is and can we trust people this album <laughs> despite what i said earlier about nana this album doesn't really provide answers but it is a journey into a life and what happens in life and life is complicated but as the album cover suggests i assume this is aria she's leaning on herself you have to love yourself yes and be your own fucking best friend musically i think this is one of her best albums i like the 90s pop stuff the synth pop stuff is some of her best stuff eternal sunshine and we can't be friends those are some of her best songs ever. Intro is really good. Bye is really good. Don't Wanna Break Up Again is really good. This album is full of good shit. Obviously throughout the album, there's like a spacey theme, sunshine, Saturn returns. She references the stars and the cosmos and the universe. All this shit adds more to the divine nature of love that she's always been talking about. This album is really cinematic. It's such a like vibe so fun to listen to the sad bangers are such sad bangers really good album if you like this album i would recommend melodrama obviously or the good witch this album is very good please listen to it oh my god you've done it again ariana all right we started on this journey many battery charges <laughs> and gigabytes on my memory card to go asking who is ariana grande and I think through the music, we've got a picture of her. She has a really good voice, right? This is, she's a singer at the end of the day. When I listen to music, I want to hear good shit. Her voice, heavenly, amazing, 10 out of 10, no notes. She's really good at bangers, and bangers are the most hype songs. So if you're really good at the highs, you're going to have really high highs. I feel like... She's a bit underrated for her versatility. She kind of has this image as just a pop star, a pop singer, but she does a lot of different types of music. She does the 50s shit in Yours Truly. She does EDM in My Everything. She does 90s R&B. She does synth pop. She's explored a lot of different shit. She doesn't get enough credit for her versatility. I feel like she's also grown a lot as an artist, right? If you look at the themes of Yours Truly, no offense to Yours Truly, album full of good shit honestly i don't care about the lyrics it's just if it sounds good as i said but yours truly is a very basic picture of love and when you see her growth through sweetener and thank you next and positions and now eternal sunshine you can really see how she's matured as an artist and is diving deeper into themes that she's always been exploring. She's very honest she tells it how it is she tells her feelings and honestly i feel like she doesn't get enough credit for being funny all right Give me them babies. That's a great line. <laughs> Most of her albums, she's talking about love. Love as this divine source. She's very positive about love. Love is the thing that saves us. Honestly, good day. We need more love in the world. <laughs> Another thing she talks about, manifesting, self-confidence, believing in yourself. We also need more of that in the world. And also, you know her name, not her story. She is the pop star, okay? Go Ari. Go Ari. Go Ari. Okay, my battery's actually dying, so I have to go. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. What can you comment? You can comment what your favorite Ariana song is. You can comment who you want me to do this on next. Whatever. Okay. Um, thank you again for watching. Love you guys. <sighs> Dearly. Okay. <laughs> stay safe. Stay sane. Catch you next time. Peace.